Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1. I want to read the first three verses and share a thought, particularly in the third verse. There's ever a day, and, and I probably say this quite often, that we need a word from the Lord, it's today. We are living in times that many of us have never seen. But I still believe that there's a God in heaven that not only reigns in heaven, but Brother Lynn reigns in my heart. Does he reign in your heart this morning? Amen. Amen. What do you mean, Brother Mark, reigning in my heart? Is he your God of your situations? Huh? Is he your God of your situations? Whatever they are, if he's not, make him your God of your situations. You may be standing here this morning and think, well, Mark, I come to church and I love the Lord with all of my heart. But you know what? I've seen people before, and I'm not saying that we're not troubled by things that come into our lives. We're not uh, filled with sorrows with things that come into our lives. There's a time to reap or a time to reap and a time to sow. There's a time to rejoice. There's a time to be sorrow uh, and, and so forth and that. But uh, I still believe that God is still God no matter where we're at in our lives. Don't you? So let's look at uh, Ezekiel 1 verse 1. Everybody found your places? Say amen. amen. Verse 1. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives of the river of Shabar, that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's Jehoiachin captivity, the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Bazai, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river of Shabar, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we come to you this morning, we love you and we thank you, Lord, for each one that's here today, knowing that, God, that many faces mean for many things and many troubles and many worries and things and many sorrows. But, Father, we know that you're able to comfort each one of us today. Father, we ask you this morning, Lord, just to meet every need that's here, the worries, and, God, Lord, that you just have your way in this service and anoint this vessel of clay. And Father, we pray this morning, God, that you give us ears to hear and a mind to understand and a heart to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray and the church say it. Amen. 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 You may be seated this morning. I want to look at a thought found specifically in the third verse. That is the Lord's word and the Lord's hand. God is not tied to places. What I mean by that is, no matter where we're at in our lives, and I realize that many struggles uh, that we have in our lives, and some are obviously a lot worse at times than at other times, but wherever we're at, God can get to us. Amen. 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 He got to the three Hebrew children in the furnace fire, fiery furnace. He got to Daniel, and he got to Job, and he got to all. So whether in a dungeon or in a prison, even in Ezekiel's situation that he was at this particular time, was in Babylon, and was a place of captivity. There is no place so, so bad and so wicked that the Lord cannot move in our lives and in our situation. Verse number one of our text that we read, he said, and uh, think about this. Now, you've got to remember, uh, think about not only Ezekiel, but his situation. He had for so long time been in captivity. For a long time, he had suffered much pain and much sorrow and much maybe even confusion and depression and discouragement. I don't know, but I believe that uh, Ezekiel faced these things. But uh, look at verse number one. It said, the heavens were opened. And I saw visions of God. Can I tell you, it does not matter where we're at, but God has a special place and a special care for his people when they're at their lowest and worst conditions. 
Many times God gives a special vision to a person as he did here with Ezekiel when there is a great need. And I know with my own experience down through the years and so many times that God has spoken to me uh, uh, just through the spirit and this uh, touched my mind and touched my heart. But I have seen times down through the years that I have caught visions of God and what God has doing sometimes and we realize that we are people of faith and we walk by faith and, and God inspires us in things but there are times those special times when God comes in and begins to reveal himself to us in ways that perhaps before we have never known but he also gives us those inspiration that will help us in what we're trying and what we're being faced with the circumstances of this vision of Ezekiel, we know that he was among the captives. Amen. Verse number one says that I was among the captives by the river of Shabar. He was banished from his native land, but he was not banished from God. He was banished and took captive from his homeland, from his place that he resided but he was never away from God. Are you glad this morning that God is a God that no matter where this world takes us and no matter what we face in this life that God is an ever present help in time of need. Hallelujah. Come on church. Get with me this morning. He was banished from his land but not from God. He was surrounded as we studied uh, and by much sorrow and pain even from his fellow captives. But Ezekiel himself was a captive and he was troubled and his trouble revealed his need for God. Sometimes God will allow us to get into trouble so that we can recognize our need of him. Amen. If we was always in a good place and uh, seemed like we never did go through some struggles and things that we probably never give God much of a thought. But God, amen, sometimes will allow the things of this world and the things that goes on in our lives to affect us to the place where we have to recognize, Lord, I need you. Yeah. Amen. We look at verse 1 there. He said, I was among the captives by the river of Shabar. God is able to look upon the heart of a person and what type of a person they are. There are those who are able to see God in, a, in whatever situation they're in and be able to capture the mind of God for that particular circumstance. Amen. My thought is that Ezekiel, even in the midst of his captivity, he was able to capture a vision of God. And when I talk about a vision now, Ezekiel, he saw the vision. And I'm not going to get into it because you can read the rest of chapter 1 of the glory that God showed Ezekiel. But my point is, amen, that sometimes God, amen, will come to us and we can, if we can just press through and look at, uh, the, the uh, get a pass our problems and things we can capture a vision of God amen. amen hallelujah we are told that a certain man had a vision when we are told that a certain man had a vision of God it implies that beside the God who gives it there is the man who receives it amen sometimes we get so burdened down and troubled uh, that all we can think about is us come on, come on. Come on. I'm not saying we shouldn't think about us sometimes I feel, I feel, I, I have my own little pity parties like everybody else does. Amen. But you know what my biggest problem is? Is when I can get beyond Mark Tolson and begin to look at God and begin to look at the situation through the eyes of God and what God is telling me. Ezekiel begin to get up, get a, to begin to look past his captivity. And the Bible says he saw a vision of God. Amen. But he had to be able to receive it. He had to be able to receive it. It's one thing to capture a vision and to see it, but it's something totally different when you receive it. Amen. When he speaks to a man, when God speaks to, to there's a man who being aware of it stands and he listens. Ezekiel, that name means God will strengthen. Even though Israel had taken 
had been taken into exile for their rebellious acts against God, God had given Ezekiel a message of hope. Amen. God's word and his promises are stronger and greater than the powers of your enemy. I said God's word and his promises are greater than the promise than the enemy, than your enemy that you face. Not trying to belittle or make light of anything. But if my God ain't bigger than me and my problems, I ain't got much of a God. Yes, Come on, church, help me out now. I said just because I may go through things, but if my God ain't bigger than my problems, I need to find me a real God. Amen. If God ain't bigger and able to comfort me and able to strengthen me in the things that I face, I ain't got much of a God. But I'm glad this morning I don't have to learn 300 names of different gods of Buddha. But you know what? I give my life to the Lord over 40 years ago. And you know what my God's name is? Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Amen. I'm here to tell you that we need to know and get a hold of the things of God and know that whatever we're facing, whatever we're going through, that the Word of God and the hand of God is upon the children of God. Amen. amen. Ezekiel. Amen. He said that. But he called a vision. We'll turn to the news today. And I don't have to tell you, but it all it is basically is just terrible. Amen. And it's getting worse and worse. I'm not saying you shouldn't listen to the news. I've known people and heard of people that turn the news on and keep it on 24-7. Amen. I don't want that. I keep enough news to keep me informed of what's going on. But I'm here to tell you, we know more about what's going on in the world than what's going on in this right here. I'm going to say it again because somebody might have got mad there. We know more about what's going on in the world and what's going on in Washington, D.C. and what's going on in all the other parts of the world when we don't even know what's going on in God's business. I'm here to tell you, yeah, I want to know what's going on in the world. Yeah, I want to keep abreast of it. I know there's troubles and trials, but I read about a hope that I have and his, whole, his name is Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, my hope, amen, is not in Washington, D.C. My hope is not in these politicians that's running and backbiting one another. But my hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. My hope, my future, my strength, my power, my comfort, the lily of my valley, my morning and bright and morning star. He's the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. He's the bright and morning star. Hallelujah. In my darkest night, I can still look up and see the sun. God, hallelujah. Do you hear me this morning? <laughs> Hang with me. I'll get to verse 3 in a minute. I'm just building a little foundation. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but we look at all these things. We look at the news. We look at the world and what's going on. But sometimes we need to be reminded that God is still in control. Yeah. Amen. Some of you, like me, you talked to him this morning. And you know where he was? Still on the throne. Amen. 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 Still on the throne. Brother Keel, they ain't got him off yet. Amen. That old stinking devil, he said in one place, I wrote about him, I will be like the Most High. I will ascend into the heavens, and I'll be like him. No. You won't never be like him because you're too evil. Amen. But you know what? I read, I read where God is an eternal throne. Amen. And one of these days, you and I are going to go visit that eternal throne. Amen. Where Jesus ever liveth to make intercession for you and for me. Amen. Verse 1, he said, And the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. Hallelujah. You know what's amazing to me? When God created mankind, he put in him a remarkable faculty to be able to receive and to talk to God. Amen. <laughs> to see visions of God. To see it. God didn't just create Adam and put his spirit in him and say, there it is, buddy. Live the best you can. 
And Brother Duran, God give me you. He give me and everyone that will call upon his name the ability to talk to him. Amen. The ability to see him. The ability to have one of the greatest faculties, amen, uh, that, uh, that we can ever have, uh, amen, and that is to be able to receive from God what we need. Amen. I ain't getting this point across. Oh, Some of you ain't getting that. Amen. He has given us the ability. He has put within us the ability to hear a heavenly God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Woo. I said he has put in us the ability to see God. Amen. He has put in us the ability to have communication with him. Amen. But also, he's given us the ability to hear his voice. Amen. 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 Let's look at verse 3. Two thoughts in this verse that I want to look at specifically. It said, The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came. And then the latter part of that third verse, the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And that's my thought this morning. The Lord's word and the Lord's hand. Amen. Amen. As we look at these verses, that this verse, we need to take the important look at the order in which they are given. The Bible said the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel. The second part is the hand of the Lord was upon him. So the word of the Lord is the first thing that God will give to us when he's touching us. Words are an expression of our thoughts. What we think. Now some people, they just, if they think it, they say it. You know, you don't have to tell you everything you think. Amen. I told somebody that one time. Amen. You don't have to tell everything you, you, that you know when you think. Sometimes it's just better to be quiet. Yes. Amen. Amen. But basically the words are our thoughts. It's what we're thinking. And the divine word, the precious word of God... It is, is his utterance to the thoughts to that one in whom he's speaking to. God speaks to his children. I believe that this morning. Yes. I believe God still talks to those that will listen. The thought when we when, so God is speaking his thoughts toward us. God's thoughts toward us are good and right. Words, amen, carry a lot of weight, do they not? Amen. The words that are spoken here to Ezekiel implies the relationship that was between Ezekiel, the man of God, and God himself. But we're not to simply hear and to understand God's word, but we are to act upon them. Right. Amen. Amen. You can have the best preacher up here or you can listen to your favorite preacher on TV and think about what a wonderful message they may have preached. But if we don't act upon these words, it will not affect us very much and it will not accomplish much in our lives. Amen. Revelations 1 and 3 said, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. I believe God's time's at hand. Amen. You say, Mark, I've heard that uh, a lot of years. I have too. But you know what? Every day I live, I believe it could be my last day. Amen. 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 I'm not doom and gloom because I wake up of a morning and my one of the first things I say is, good morning, Lord. 
Thank you for another day. And I want to stay here as long as God wants me here. But I can tell you one thing. When God said, Mark, your days in, uh, on this earth is done, I'm out of here. Amen. Wow, that's right. Amen. I'm out of here. But they that hear, blessed is he. Catch that what the writer said. Blessed is he that readeth and that heareth the words of this prophecy and keep those things that are written in it. You want to be blessed? We all like to be blessed, don't we? I like it when people bless me. I appreciate the, the goodness that you've done for me this week for my birthday. And I thank God for 63 years. Amen. You think, that out, that's all how old you are? That head looks like it's wore out two bodies. Amen. Uh, but you know, amen. But you know what? I'm glad today for the blessings. I want to be blessed, don't you? I want God. I want to live in a way that God will bless me. Amen. And that's not the only reason, but uh, I'm here to tell you, you can't serve God and not be blessed of God. Amen. Blessed are they that hear and read the words of this prophecy and keep them. We ought to keep it. Amen. In chapter 2, and we're not going to read that, but in chapter 2 there of Ezekiel, when Ezekiel was discouraged by his experiences and apprehensions, the Bible said the Spirit lifted him up and he heard the voice of God speaking to him. We have to be careful not to listen to the many voices that come into our lives during the, during, during the day because they will only bring us distress and discouragements. Right. If God's children will learn to listen to his voice and obey his word, then they will be led, uh, then they will lead us into the presence, into the glory of the Lord. Amen. 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 Yes, we struggle. I'm, I'm not, again, I certainly don't want to make light of nothing of anybody that's going through. And there's times of sorrow, there's times of pain. I understand that. They are. I've been there. I know. But we have to look beyond, not not just stick our head in the in the sand and say it ain't it ain't so, but knowing that God is still God no matter where we're at. Right. If the problems of our life is holding us captive, that's okay. But just remember, in your captivity, God can take you and show you a vision of Him. Amen. Amen. Uh, you heard me tell this story, Jackie and I, many, many years ago, was going through something that at that particular time was one of the worst things that I've ever dealt with in my life. And I literally thought I was going to lose my mind. I literally thought, man, that my spirit just, uh, I didn't want to preach. I didn't even want to get out of bed, not for one day, but for days on end. And I know. And I told God time after time, I said, Lord, I, I can't deal with this. I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to function. One night, not that I wasn't serious with God before, but I tell you one night, I got serious. And I'm walking to my house <laughs> room to room and I'm a praying. I said, God, I got to have something. I got to have relief. And all of a sudden, I begin to feel the presence of God in my life. Amen. Amen. And you know what? He said, Mark, I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to take care of it. But you know what? See, it didn't take until cure of the next day. It was a few days later. Matter of fact, probably a few weeks later. But my point is, God showed me a vision of him and who he was. And let me tell you, no matter where you're at, no matter how bad it is, God is more than able to supply every need that we have. Amen. The word of the Lord is the first one. The second one is the hand of the Lord. In the scriptures, you read about where in so many different ways and so many different places that God touched people with his hands. Nehemiah even said this, the hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand of the Lord was upon me. The hand is a symbol of activity. It's a symbol of direction. How do people point? Their hand, don't they? I mean, the finger, but it's, it's direction. 
control. Why do we take things and put them in our hands sometimes that's seemingly out of control, but we take it and we hand means control. God puts his hand upon us and brings everything under control. Amen. Amen. A protecting power. Protecting power. He gives us protection, the hand does. Amen. We cannot fulfill the things of God just simply the old church by hearing the word. There is a command that goes with the word. Do you realize this morning that the relationship between God and man, mankind, is God commands his word and we obey his word. God commands, we obey. See, God ain't going to change for me. The Bible says he changes not. I ain't that special in the eyes of God. Now, I'm special in the sense I'm his child. I'm his born again. But what he requires out of me requires out of others. What he requires out of others requires out of me. So, it's like a, we got a lot of rebellious children today, God does. Uh-oh. Well, I didn't get an amen one there. I said, God's got a lot of rebellious children. And I hope none of them are here. <laughs> I'm going to preach it anyhow. I was rebellious. One of the worst whippings I got one time when I was about six or seven years old and my grandpa, after I tore the door off the hinges, literally tore the door off the hinges because I was mad and stubborn and went out the door and slammed it and guess what? It fell off the hook or fell off the hinge. And you've heard me say what my grandpa used to tell me, I'm going to get you rags. He got my rags. <laughs> so I was stubborn and rebellious like a lot of us are. Amen. I don't always do everything God God way, at least not at first, but I learned. God commands, we listen, and we obey. Amen? Amen. Amen? So, the hand of the Lord was upon Ezekiel. <clears throat> we don't only need a revelation of God's truth, but also guidance in his truths. This is where we need the hand of God upon us. Elijah, very familiar story. And I'm not going to read it. But just a, a verse of scripture there. Elijah, he had prayed for rain. And you know the story. He prayed seven times and finally the prophet came back and the servant came back to Elijah and said, I see a cloud that's about ready to, about the size of a man's hand. And Elijah told the king, said, get down because it's getting ready to come in abundance of rain. But the Bible says in 1 Kings 18.46, the, listen to what, now, Elijah's running against a chariot of horses. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. I don't know if you, that, that just blesses me thinking. Here's a man that has outrun a chariot of horses, beating to Jezreel. Amen. Elijah, when God puts his hand on you, let me tell you, you can do whatever you whatever God tells you to do, can you not? Yeah. Ezra 728 said, and I was strengthened as the hand of my of the Lord my God was upon me. Now let's get ready to close here if they want to come to the music. Isaiah 66 and 14 says, The hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants. The hand of the Lord shall be known to his servants. <clears throat> 